Hi guys, uh, welcome to Investing with JYK, and today we'll talk about another Chinese uh, expressway company, Toll Road. Love the Toll Roads. Um, so this one is uh, Jiangsu Expressway. It's public in China, uh, in I think the Shanghai Exchange. I think that's it. Yeah, Shanghai Exchange as well as the Hong Kong Exchange. And um, outside China, you can buy it uh, in the Hong Kong exchange and you can also get a discount so why not and even I'm buying it uh, through uh, the Hong Kong exchange there's an ADR uh, it's level 1 ADR is very little information this uh, there's very little liquidity too. trade the volume is like 107 uh, the price is a bit messed up too uh, clearly this does not translate to 8 um, a Hong Kong dollars because eight Hong Kong dollars is probably like one dollar. So I think it's a twenty to one ratio. So twenty, so uh, twenty shares of this combines to one share of the ADR. But I have no idea because I can't find the custody, uh, the depository bank. So eight point eight six KD to USD. That should be 1.13, so if it's 1 to 20, then it should be around $22. So there's uh, clearly a discrepancy. Now, the price has gone down a lot. There's a lot of this trade war stuff. There's really nothing that uh, materially impacts uh, this particular company. The price is back to where it was in 2017, early 2017. Uh, dividends has gone up to about 1. So um, these are... Uh, all good signs. PE is very low. PB is P is like eight. Uh, PB is like one point four. So all good things. And uh, what do they have? Uh, let's look at their annual report. Essentially, they own some. The, um, they own some. Uh, uh, Toll roads as I said before. Now, before we go there, let's just look at some of the accounting data. So revenue keeps increasing, uh, except in 2015, when there was a there was a bit of a slowdown in China. And, um, uh, but overall, the trend is definitely healthy. Profit has been growing. Uh, there's a bit of a drop here, not quite sure what happened. Um, Net of a recurring share. Okay, so yeah, some some. It's it's a fairly stable company, so it's just you can't expect it to grow really fast, and um, and then assets grows, uh, liability also grows. They're actually building a new one, I think. But um, if we look at uh, ROE, this is ROE basically is like sixteen, so pretty good stuff. You know, anything above 15 is, is pretty good and you're getting this at a um, uh, at 1.4 PB so it's you know pretty good and what do they have let's see summary of the company's business very useful these are what they have they have this uh, some some investment development company which is whatever shit and this one is also whatever shit they actually this accounts for like five percent of their revenue now you got one expressway one expressway another expressway another ex, uh, expressway another expressway and then a bridge very nice and then you have some uh, stupid things here bunch of stupid things here another expressway another bridge and uh, another expressway. So a bunch of expressways like those. Um, if you look at their percentage, oh, let's see. Uh, why do they want to show me the picture of the board member? It's so dumb. Right, if you look at um, their, you know, 
traffic volume, you can see that in their all their expressways, they list all these expressways as they own. Uh, mostly are increasing. Uh, you got this one, passenger vehicle, total traffic volumes going up by a bit. This is uh, year over year, so that's a growth. Here some have more growth. The uh, total revenue is increasing. Oh, this one is decreasing a bit uh, with their uh, uh, you know, tiny bit of decrease, but in general, all healthy trends. Uh, but 2017 was a better year than 2016, though. So you have to keep that in mind. 2016 was was um, when well, actually that was when things kind of bottomed. 2000, early 2016, and that's something that is very interesting. So, uh, I'm gonna go off a tangent. I'm, I've been reading this book, Anatomy of a Bear, and I'm in bear market or something. I, I, I don't remember the name, but uh, Russell Napier. So. It's funny, a lot of these um, bottom of cycles of either long or, especially the long, they did, uh, he discussed the long cycles. These cycles, the bottom seem to coincide with the bottom of the commodity cycle. So the commodity prices, the, the increase of commodity cycle, uh, commodity price actually um, uh is kind of a signal, so it actually comes before the uh, turn of the stock market. So very interesting stuff. Um, so yeah, here you have a bridge that kind of goes up. This one kind of went down. Not quite sure why. Su Jia Hong. Yeah, that is weird. This is Suzhou, uh, Jiaxing, and Hangzhou. That these are not where you would expect. Drop offs. Maybe there's something to do with the trucks. That is weird. These all these three um, cities are, are very uh, vibrant cities. Uh, and the other thing is, we kind of have to pay for these these uh, um, expressways. We have to pay attention on where they are located. Um, they are basically going to be influenced by the economic activities of that region. So in um, uh, in uh, Suzhou, well, sorry, Jiangsu, which is uh, which is um, like one of the top uh, growers in China, um, both in growth and size. So GDP uh, by province, China. It's it ranks really high. Uh, here you go. You go Guangdong, Jiangsu, Shandong, Zhejiang. Those are like the four ones. Four that goes really uh, on the top, and you can see in terms of growth, right? The growth is also seven percent plus. Um, this is two thousand seventeen. If you go down, uh, you have some, you know, the northern China is usually where things go really bad. Uh, northeast. And you know, Jilin, Inner Mongolia, and probably uh, Liaoning. Yeah, that's north. And uh, all these places are, are uh, Gansu. Well, wow, that's like south. Sorry, north west. Yeah, so those are like the the kind of worst places. Um, but yeah. They they grow faster than uh, the, the the entire China, and then they're the top. Uh, they they're at the top in terms of uh, share of GDP as well. So you know that kind of tells you there is um, it, you will get a better than average return on these toll roads compared to other toll roads, and. Um, the other thing is I couldn't find the data here anymore. Uh, the um, Chinese express expressways all have a period of um, uh, in which you can charge tolls, and that period, as we discussed previously in Guangdong Expressway, is actually some of them are actually uh, stopping, right? and that's because Guangdong is the place where uh, the the that first got developed um, because it was close to Hong Kong and then during the opening up period Shenzhen became a special district and then a lot of um, 
policy got tilted towards that. So railroads, um, you know, railroads, highways, and even um, a nuclear station, power station got built there first. Uh, so those were kind of the the period is expiring. For Jiangsu, though, the I think the closest still has cl more than ten years, close to fifteen years of period uh, during which you, they can make uh, they can charge toll. So uh, that's some that's a worry that you don't have with uh, Jiangsu Expressway. And they have some bridges, you know. Then yeah, so very nice trends in general. And the other thing, as you know, in terms of macro, uh, as people get richer, they will get more cars, as we discussed previously, and you can also compare that against um, the Japanese data. Right? So Chinese had about like 150 cars per thousand people in 2012. Now I don't know, 200 maybe, but the Japanese has like 500 plus. So yeah. You can't compare it to the U.S. because in the U.S. is a lot less densely populated, so you and you end up with you know more than one car per family in general. In in uh, in China's uh, you know 100 200 cars not per person, but not per thousand person, but per thousand households. Right? So okay, uh, so they started developing some stupid real estate, which I don't I don't really like. But uh, it's less than five percent of their revenue, so it's like okay, whatever. Um, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to show you, I found this uh, website. I paid for it. It's like the best um, data aggregator for Chinese uh, stocks that I know of. It's, this is fantastic. So you could look at uh, and then you can go to I should have had it open but uh, I wasn't thinking straight hmm. so uh, this is ROE uh, in terms of you know, let's make it 20 years increasing ROE well that's for the parent company this is uh, just increasing ROE, but I don't really care about the parent company that much. I really care about the consolidated. So increasing ROE in terms of leverage, uh, it was low, and then now it's about 1.6. The increase in leverage in here, I'm, I think something happened probably due to um, either buying some new uh, asset or building some new asset. ROA went down in 2015, but in general, the, the uh, these numbers are nothing is worrying. There's no clear trend of deterioration. Um, yeah, net profit margin goes hovers around you know like 30 to 40 basically. And the other thing is, this is going to be a cash cow. So we want lots and lots of cash. And this is a very nice metric that tells me the percentage of cash flow from operating up activities compared to uh, uh, net income. So you can see this usually hovers above 100%, as you would expect from a... Um, from a tow road, right? So very nice. And the other thing is, if you look at uh, dividend payout, well, one thing you definitely notice is the growing. Uh, uh, do I have 20, 30, twenty? No, there's no twenty years. There's only ten years. But one thing you notice is the blue bar is uh, the net. Income. So net income has been increasing. It's not very fast, but it's increasing. And then the other one uh, is the um, dividend. Dividends has been uh, increasing too. And at the moment, dividend payout ratio is actually fairly low compared to historical numbers. And 
that's already a 6%. So this is fantastic. By the time, I think, well, I should have dug into this a bit more. i will probably make a second video on this, but um, the, the fact that there is a currently a gap, well, one way you can explain this by deteriorating earning quality, but really these guys don't have an earnings prop, uh, quality problem because they don't take receivables. Right? You don't get a bill you know, to pay in 90 days when you go through a toll road. You pay cash. So they don't really have that problem. And they don't have inventory problem because it's a freaking toll road. It's the the if you talk about inventory, it's their their uh, long term asset. So it's probably because they um, bought something, so their free cash flow decreased it's from some kind of investment. So that eventually will turn into cash flow as well. So um, yeah, I'll have to look up on that but the thing is so cheap i i'm very excited about this um so yeah though so this is a fairly rough look um i really like this company i bought some myself just uh today actually uh so we'll see maybe we'll drop even more maybe i can buy more so um yeah see you next time and uh, yeah that's it